So welcome to the Digital Transformation Academy video podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to start a series about the accounting process computerization or accounting software implementation or accounting digitalization or whatever you may want to call it. Welcome to the Digital Transformation Academy. My name is Dennis Hilario and I'm here to help you in your digital transformation journey. Let the show begin. Today is December 18. Uh, It's a Friday, one more week before Christmas. My name is Dennis Hilario and I help small businesses in their digital transformation. In the past weeks, I've been releasing episodes every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but because of the increasing client engagement in the past days, I will still try, but I will release episode at least once a week. So make sure to subscribe to whatever platform you are consuming this. Let's start with the end in mind. So imagine you have a small business and then you would want to know now, as in now, how much is your total sales for the week? How much is your gross profit from those sales? How much is uncollected from those sales? Or how much money you have to pay your suppliers? The key word here is now. That is the greatest value in digitizing the booking of your transactions. Because if you don't get the information now, I am sure you are stressed out. Or worse is having an anxiety attack. Or even worse is you have no idea that you've been losing money already and it's too late for you to get back up. With that goal, I believe that establishing the right accounting process and digitizing it is really worth the effort. And how do I know this? Uh, Because I've been running a business for 20 years now, both for my software company and a home interior product family business. And I've seen and experienced losses and profit leaks if you don't have all the information on time. But before we move on, if you have zero background in accounting or you haven't watched my earlier episodes, I suggest that you go back to those episodes to learn the basics of accounting and then just jump right back in. Because the accounting software will not teach you accounting. It is just a tool to reach your end goal. Or you may want to check out my accounting starter digital course at accountingcourseph.com if you want to fast track your accounting software implementation because it comes with a 6 months free access to our own cloud accounting software. Again, accountingcourseph.com. In this series, I assume that you as the business owner will do the legwork, but uh, I do have a one-month program. It's a virtual private workshop to teach you and or your team to implement full business process automation, not just accounting. So just go to oneboxcloud.com slash BPA course for details. Okay, so let's start with the checklist. Here are the things that you need to prepare before you get started. Take note that this applies to any accounting software you prefer to use or you can even start with spreadsheets like Excel uh, or Google Spreadsheet if you want. So the first item in the checklist is your accounting process and policies. Again, just go back to the earlier episodes if you want to learn the proper accounting process. But if you don't have an accounting process, then that accounting software will not do it for you. Then the next item, of course, you will need computers, uh, a network, and internet, uh, and then a printer if you want to automatically print forms from the accounting software. You need computers for you, of course, uh, and or your staff if you have an accounting staff. Another item, uh, again, as discussed in the earlier episodes, uh, is the chart of accounts. You will need the list of the chart of accounts. If you don't have one, Uh, In my other episode, I have a downloadable standard chart of accounts there. You probably may want to check it out. Um, And then the next item is the listing of your suppliers or vendors. So if you try to build the initial database of your suppliers, uh, you should put in the name, the TIN, the addresses, the contact information. And then it is important also that you put like a supplier code uh, on each supplier it can be an alias of the supplier or a short name of the supplier. So it will be easier uh, to call those suppliers once you have uh, established the accounting software. So the next item in the list is the customer listing. So similar to suppliers, you have to establish the customer names, uh, addresses, contact info, and also a customer code. 
then you um you also have to uh, build a database of your bank accounts together with the cash accounts that you use if you have uh, uh, say cash on hand petty cash or undeposited collection account uh, if you have stores another item is also to figure out if you want to use like, the automatic VAT computation so normally now it's 12 percent and then what are the withholding tax codes uh, that you withhold uh, to your suppliers um, normally, if it's goods, there's 1%. If it's a service company, you withhold 2% uh, from them. And then the next item is, like I said before, you have to determine what forms you'd like to print from the software. So normally, you'd want to print invoices, uh, vouchers, like check vouchers, uh, accounts payable voucher if it's applicable. Um, the invoices, it's a little bit tricky because you have to if you have an ATP from the BIR, you'd want to shoot it or apply for a loose leaf so you can be allowed to print it from a blank uh, paper. And then earlier, we talked about the end in mind. Uh, if you want to know some information, uh, real time. So those are the reports that you'd like to see or generate from the accounting software. So it is also important that you have those uh, reports in mind. What are the reports that you'd like to see? Uh, again, in my earlier episodes, I have um, discussed uh, the basic standard reports that you, you should generate from uh, the accounting software. But of course, the balance sheet and income statement, those things are the basics. One important item in uh, automating your accounting is the accounting entry uh, per transaction. What are the debits and the credits that should be automated uh, in every transaction? If you should issue an invoice... Uh, by default, there's a debit to accounts receivables and then a credit to the revenue or sales and your VAT. If it's a uh, utility expense, if you pay, say, the Meralco, you have debit to your uh, electricity expense and credit your cash in bank. So those are a little bit technical, meaning uh, at, at least a knowledge on basic accounting entries. You may ask or uh, cons you may consult uh, an experienced accountant for details or again check out my a course that discuss details on those accounting entries. Now, if you have uh, some accounting staff uh, who can help you in encoding and booking transactions, you also have to define the users and the controls of each user. And then uh, the last item in the checklist is the beginning balances. So once you've established the, ba the master list of the chart of accounts, suppliers, customers, and bank accounts, you have to choose a cutoff. Um, when would you would want to start uh, encoding transactions because you don't want to book and encode transactions in the past because it's going to take some time especially if you have volume of transactions so normally what you set up in the beginning balances are the open invoices meaning the unpaid invoices per supplier per sales invoice what are the unpaid accounts payables uh, as of a given cutoff say end of uh, November 2020 and then, of course, the ending balances of your bank accounts. How much is in your bank account as of November 20, 2020? Uh, and then, if you have established a trial balance already uh, by uh, end of 2020, then you can go ahead and do that. But um, I understand if you don't have a balance sheet or trial, trial balance at all, uh, that's not, pro not a problem. But if you go deeper in understanding accounting, uh, I think that will be a valuable, a very valuable information that again discuss in my accounting course. But if not, I strongly recommend to consult an accountant if you want to establish your trial balance. So that is it for now. So as an exercise, please go ahead and uh, uh, prepare a spreadsheet of those item lists or checklist that I have mentioned in this episode. And in the next episodes, I am sharing a free base template from Airtable where you can practice doing your first digital accounting bookkeeping. So make sure to stay tuned. Again, this video podcast series is brought to you by my Accounting Starter Digital Course. If you want to fast track your accounting knowledge in one sitting, go ahead and uh, see this course. It is a six-module course about 30 to 4 to 5 minutes per module that teaches you things from basic accounting terms, government compliance, up to a free access to our cloud 
accounting software. So just go to accountingcourseph.com and you'll get instant access. But if you're someone who wants to fully automate your business processes, uh, check out my online SNAP Business Process Automation Workshop where I will teach you privately online. It's an eight hours per week for one month until you learn how to execute a full business process automation. Just go to oneboxcloud.com slash BPA course to enroll. Then lastly, if you want a free copy of my ebook, A Small Business Guide to Digital Transformation, kindly join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash onebuckscloud. Once you join, uh, you'll see the link to download the ebook for free and also a post where you can start with Airtable to start recording and tracking your expenses. Also 100% free. If you like this uh, episode, kindly smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe keep you up to date with the next episode that is it for now thank you so much for watching or listening be extra life in business have a great day